Well, the most surprising thing that people <laughs> find is the fact that I have seven kids. That, that's the number one. Then a part of my story, I was a neo-Nazi white power skinhead when I was a teenager. From very young, felt very much like the black sheep in my family and had this sense of not really belonging. And so I started to be drawn towards like skateboarding culture and punk rock culture. A couple weeks before I turned 15, I went to a party. I ended up being raped by two men. They were white guys. That experience really set my life off on a very self-destructive trajectory. On the periphery of the punk rock scene were skinheads, and they were the angriest people. I was like, wow, those are my people. They always had each other's backs and had a really close-knit sort of bond and friendship, and that really, really appealed to me. I understood that the price of admission was to say, I hate black people, I hate Jews, because I hated everyone already. And it was almost, in fact, a relief to narrow down the hatred and anger. We would hang racist literature, yelling racial epithets to people of color. There was a time where somebody had a canister of tear gas and we threw that into a gay nightclub. It was definitely a targeted attack. Eventually, I I ended up moving to Houston to go live with um, the mom and little brothers of a guy that I was going out with because I didn't really have anywhere else to go at that point. She, by engaging me and showing me immense compassion and acceptance when I didn't deserve any, really helped me to have to look differently at myself. And just the return to sort of like regular people, thing, things like that that I hadn't done for four or five years at that point. Any sort of extreme ideals that we encounter during our youth and our formative years, it's very foundational to the adults that we become. Very much like a reprogramming of your brain. There's a Facebook group, we can all go there and just be like, whoa, I'm really struggling. Some of the people that have been out less time um, than I have, it's like, I'm cut off in traffic by a black man. And my initial response in my mind is to throw a racial epithet. And much like most addictions, relapse is very common. As someone who has been an ex-smoker multiple times, that addiction, that I think it's a very good parallel. You can know intellectually that this is something that doesn't have a part in your life. But depending on how long you were involved, it can be an ongoing, lifelong process to disengage completely. Got it? <laughs> there is no normalization of violence and hatred and bigotry that's happening in my day-to-day -day life. 